Hello, my name is Joseph Kadane, and I'm a third year medical student on the COVID student aid team at the UCSF School of Medicine. In these moments of uncertainty, our mission is to disseminate information and resources to our communities, support the goals of our doctors, and remind you all of the importance of social distancing. As part of our mission, we wanted to provide an educational overview of coronavirus, its related signs and symptoms, best practices, and answers to frequently asked questions. So Xavier, what exactly is coronavirus? Great question, Joseph. Coronaviruses are a group of viruses that account for your run-of-the-mill airway infections, perhaps up to a third of all airway infections acquired in the community. But more importantly, what is COVID-19? COVID-19 is a viral infection caused by the specific coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, that was first identified in Wuhan, China in 2019, hence the 19, and has quickly spread internationally, most prominently in countries such as Italy, South Korea, and here in the United States. When the World Health Organization declared this as a pandemic on March 11th, there were 118,000 cases of COVID-19 worldwide, with over 4,000 total deaths. In just two and a half weeks, the number of confirmed cases have increased to more than five times that, with more than 33,000 people losing their lives. Experts anticipate this to continue or even increase given the rollout of more testing, particularly here in the United States. The rapid spread of this disease makes interventions at the individual level even more vital to contain it. But Xavier, how exactly does this disease spread? Another excellent question, Joseph. COVID-19 is spread through respiratory droplets of infected people. These are small drops of bodily fluids filled with viral particles that are produced during a cough or a sneeze. Sometimes these can land in the mouths, eyes, or noses of those who are near us and enter their lungs when they breathe. So what can we do to protect ourselves and those around us? See you. Could you help us out? The best way is to avoid being exposed to the virus. If possible, stay at home and only go out for essential needs, staying at least six feet away from others. This is known as social distancing. Avoid large crowds and understand that being in smaller ones can still be risky. Now, if you must be around other people, please do the following. One, wash your hands with soap and water constantly and thoroughly for at least 20 seconds. Two, try not to touch your face with your hands, especially your mouth, nose, or eyes. Three, minimize physical contact by avoiding hugs, high fives, or handshakes. And four, <clears throat> cough in your elbow, not your hand. Now, you may think that you should be wearing a mask, but actually, hmm. Hey, Chris, who exactly should be wearing one again? Great question, see you. Let's dive into some basic guidelines around mask use. Masks, ideally N95s, function as a barrier and prevent COVID-19 from entering the air and spreading to the lungs via respiratory droplets. So, in regard to who should be wearing a mask, according to the CDC, masks are generally recommended in two situations. One, if you are sick and are going to be around others, or two, if you are taking care of someone who is sick and they can't wear a mask for whatever reason. If you are sick but are unable to wear a mask, then you should do your best to cough and sneeze into your elbow. Wait, 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 Chris! What if I'm healthy and I'm not a caregiver of someone who is sick? Are masks recommended for me just in case? No, no. Only in those two cases that I just described. Remember, the best way to avoid coming into contact with viral particles is by practicing the social distancing techniques that we discussed earlier. It's important to remember that we are currently in the midst of a nationwide shortage of personal protective equipment. Healthcare providers and caregivers are not able to distance themselves from those who are sick, so it is imperative to say masks for them. If you have extra masks or personal protective equipment, please visit donatepe.org to find more information about local donation sites. While these are the CDC's current recommendations, please continue to check their website for updates. Our understanding of COVID-19 is constantly evolving, and with that, the role of masks may change. However, one thing scientists all agree on is that social distancing is the most important intervention to protect yourself and others. Thanks, Chris. Let's now discuss how COVID-19 presents. 
The most common signs and symptoms are fever, cough, shortness of breath, and muscle aches. Most of these symptoms appear four to five days after contracting the virus, but in some cases, symptoms can actually appear up to 14 days later. This means that it's still possible to transmit the virus even if there aren't any symptoms. Wait, but see you. Who's at most risk for serious complications from COVID-19? They include people over the age of 60 and those with serious underlying medical conditions like diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, or HIV. Now, many of these symptoms will look like the flu. So if you have any of these symptoms and want to know what the best next steps are, take a look at this diagram based off of UCSF guidelines. If you do not have any of these common symptoms, then there is no further evaluation for COVID-19. Let's now zoom in and look at this diagram in more detail. If you have any of the following common symptoms for COVID and other potential life-threatening symptoms, such that you can't breathe, have chest pain, or are confused, then call 911 and put on a mask as EMS comes to pick you up. Now, if you do not have any life-threatening symptoms, then contact your primary doctor via phone or virtually before going in person and describe your symptoms. They will further assess the next best steps for you. In short, stay home if you are mildly ill with COVID. Do not leave your home except to get medical care. If you have any questions or concerns regarding your health, please reach out to a healthcare provider. Thank you team for the great overview. We hope that you leave this video with three takeaway points. One, the best way to prevent infection from coronavirus is to reduce exposure from each other and practice social distancing. Two, wear a mask only if you're sick or taking care of someone who is sick. Hospitals and providers are running out of personal protective equipment for all patients. Three, call your primary doctor to describe your symptoms if you feel mildly ill. But if you have life-threatening symptoms, call 911. This is a public health emergency that involves all of us. We ask that people do not use this time of adversity to propagate racist and xenophobic messaging to hurting communities. Bigotry and discrimination are never appropriate. We understand that this may be a scary time filled with uncertainty for you, your friends, or loved ones. However, these difficult times present many opportunities to practice empathy, compassion, and solidarity. And remember, social distancing does not mean social isolation. If you're able to, call your family, call your friends, talk to your dog, anybody. In addition to your physical health, it's also important to take care of your mental well-being. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, please follow us on Twitter at COVIDAIDUCSF. Also, please make sure to check the CDC website for updated guidelines. Thank you again.